This episode of Pen Point starts right now. This episode of Pen Point is brought to you by Audible.com. I'm going to talk even more about Paul McCartney's show on June 10th, 2011, here in uh, in uh, Las Vegas at the MGM Hockey Rink. Uh, it's a good show. And I fought because uh, I'm exactly... Uh, no, everybody's exactly the right age for the Beatles. But I mean, I bought the White Album when I was in junior high school, which is a really good time to buy the White Album. And I've listened to those, uh, the White Album and all the Beatles albums, I suppose. The earlier stuff, less so. But certainly the White Album, uh, Sgt. Pepper's Magic Mystery Tour and Abbey Road, I've listened to, let it be, I've listened to um, thousands? Thousands, I won't say 10,000. But thousands of times. And um, uh, they're real important to me. Although having seen Love, having um, seen Paul McCartney's show, I do believe now that my understanding of the Beatles uh, is wrong. My emotional attachment to the Beatles. What Paul was trying to do was very different than what he was getting across to me. And I've understood that and accepted that. And when, the, when you're given a choice on who's right, probably on any issue, Paul McCartney or Pat Gillette, Paul McCartney's right. Um, but there was a moment, and I expected when he did some stuff like A Day in the Life, which I think now people believe Paul sang all of that, because he does sing all of it, sings it beautifully, except for a little bit of Vegas throat, but that would be just cunty to mention. Um, it's really hard to sing in Vegas, and Paul is a fabulous singer. Um, when he did his little section about uh, John Lennon, everybody stood up and applauded. I expected that I would be... Um, I was moved, but I expected I would also be crying because I cry very easily at art. And I did. And then he introduced some very special people in the audience and introduced um, Olivia Harrison, is that her name? Yeah. And uh, Yoko Ono, uh, George Martin, Giles Martin. And uh, the camera went in on Yoko Ono. And then it pulled back a little bit and uh, there was uh, Sean Lennon sitting there. And you heard a gasp from the audience, from 20,000 people went, because <sighs> Sean, I hadn't seen any pictures of him, and probably right now Rev3 will put up pictures of him. But uh, the picture you want to get is uh, kind of roundish glasses, although not wire rim, but, but, but kind of a tortoise shell. And a beard, and one of those beards, you know, John Lennon, if you look at the Plastic Ono Band in Toronto, John Lennon could grow a beard. The beard goes from chest hair right up to beard. Full, bushy, lush beard. Not like this. You know my sideburns like disappear in here? And this is like really thin in here. And I can't really grow a mustache. I mean, I just have no real facial hair, even though I wear it. But John was a real man's man and had this big, big bare, you know, fur mane there. Well, he didn't trim down here like a lot of guys do, kind of like that metrosexual thing. He just let it like grow. Well, that's what Sean has grown down to here. And, um, and he showed a shot of Sean and I gasped along with the whole audience. And I felt, uh, really did um, feel chills in my body and then went completely into an explosion of crying. And I analyzed why I was crying. And I don't think I was crying because uh, it felt like John Lennon was there or something, or because I was shocked or because I was reliving John Lennon's death, which, uh, like everybody, shook me up uh, terribly, terribly, terribly. Um, I think it was just, I was crying with joy at genetics. It was like amazing to me that John Lennon's genetics had just come in and just taken over this person. I guess Sean is, what, close to the age John was when he died, probably within six or seven years. So it's the, the image we have of that age of John. And I was just overwhelmed by the, the power of genetics and the fact that some of my mom and my dad uh, live on in me. And some of my mom and dad live on in my son and my daughter. And that power just overwhelmed me. And it was amazing. It was, he looked so much like my memory 
of John Lennon. And then I, I was talking to Teller during one of our writing sessions, and I said, it's just exactly what I said here. You know, what I do in these pen points is often just what I say to Teller. Um, I, I gave him this whole speech, and then I pulled up, you know, uh, the picture uh, that they might show right here of, uh, of Sean Lennon and John Lennon side by side. And Teller looked at it and said, it's mostly just the hair, the glasses, and the age. And I went, no, they have, it's, it's the genetics. It's why I, it's my son, it's my father, it's my mother, it's my daughter. I guess all of a sudden I'm doing Chinatown, aren't I? Um, I should be back and forth like this. Um, it, it's genetics, Teller, it's genetics. And then Teller said, no, I, I, the face isn't the same shape. The eyes are different, the mouth is different, uh, the nose is very different, he looks very different. He just essentially has um, the glasses and the hair and the beard. So I don't know. Uh, but anyway, when it happened at the Paul McCartney show, I was very, very moved to see Sean Lennon. You decide for yourself, write me a tweet about it. Uh, Penn Jillette, one word, P-E-N-N-J-I-L-L-E-T-T-E. -E -E. I don't know. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 75,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod, MP3 player, and played back anywhere, anytime. Choose from books in every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, and more. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash penpoint to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash penpoint for your free audiobook.